Fire Radio. Good Irish boy, McCormick. Yes. I love it. Right. Well, here he is, Ryan McCormick. Long overdue. Ryan, welcome to the podcast, brother. Hey, man, thanks. Appreciate it, Jeremy. This is cool. So you and I have met uh, a couple times now, um, and you have always had that southern charm gentlemanship about you that I've just always admired. You've always uh, smiled. You've always engaged. You've always been kind. Um, and that stands out to me when, when I meet so many people and I shake so many hands and I work with so many different training companies. There are certain guys that stand out, and you are certainly one of them. So I appreciate you for who you are. And uh, like I said, this is long overdue because I really didn't know much about your story. And uh, you and I sat next to each other at dinner once, and we chatted, and, you know, a lot of handshaking and, and conversation and passing. But this is cool because we get to narrow in on each other for a little bit here. Um, yes. So welcome, man. It's, it's nice yeah. to have you. Uh, I appreciate it. I, I'm excited for the opportunity to, to take some time and, and just uh, share the passion and share, share a little bit about what's going on in life and the fire service. It's just, it's just fun. I love it. Well, it is fun. And if we, you know, we, you know, it was funny when you and I hopped on the first thing, Hey, how you doing? Good. How's it going? Good. Yeah. And who wants to dwell on the bad? Right. And, yeah. and that, that is a big part of it. I think the way you carry yourself and the way that I've seen you, um, you seem to always be upbeat and, and positive and exciting. And I think we need more of those people. And now learning that you're the chief of department, chief of a career department outside of Little Rock, Arkansas, um, you know, a smaller department than Little Rock right outside of there. Being a chief and carrying yourself and conducting yourself that way, it trickles down, man. It trickles down to the to the to the guys below. Oh, it does. I think I think you know we've we've heard this we've heard the saying passion's contagious, um, and I think some of the I think what's missing in some of the fire service, especially from administrating and chiefs' perspective, is is they forgot where they came from. Hundred percent. And, and I I don't. I, I've been guilty of wanting to get in the front seat and driving or in the back seat and getting to go to the fire or stuff like that. Yeah. And, and, but I, but I want to be guilty. Uh, I want, I want that, I want that ability. And I think that also needs to, to be showcased in the, around the, around the world, the fire service as well is, is don't forget where you came from. Um, and then, and then share what you know, don't hold in what you have. Uh, because, because people are just, they're, they're starting for, they're starving, I think for, for the ability to learn they're starving for the ability to be led they're starving for somebody who to share their passion and to allow them to have the passion rather than just sitting on the sidelines and watching two very very big points there i love it one don't forget where you come from i couldn't agree with you more any chief that doesn't still want to go to fires i question right yeah and absolutely. and i've seen i've seen so many people just step outside of of uh kind of removing themselves from where they came from. And, right. and that will certainly affect uh, your performance in, in how you protect the integrity of the job and especially the backstep guys. But, man, do I love share, 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 and share. You get to travel around the country. You work with Fast Rescue Solutions. You do training in other places as well. Yes. You have the ability to travel, to work with different people, and then to bring it back home. I mean, mm -hmm. I just there's so much value to that. And if you were to take that – upon yourself to keep it within and not share that you're doing a disservice and that's not what this is all about oh you're, you're right I, I'm, I'm blessed to be able to work with fast board and eric and the team and the tribe sure. uh and being able to and, and all, also other 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 agencies but i tell you it's when i go places to teach it's really it's really benefiting me more than it's benefiting that goes the students that we're teaching is because i'm learning from them and i think if you don't have that passion at it that, that attitude about learning uh, not or from others. We're going to give you something from the fast board or whatever we're teaching, engine company, truck stuff, whatever. Um, we're going to share what we know, just a little bit of what we know. But at the end of the day, I, I, I think if we're not willing as instructors, as in firefighters and teachers, whatever, to, to learn from the students, then we're, we're being, we're, 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 we're not, we're not gaining anything. I can tell you, I can, I can share my story. I can share my, uh, my knowledge um, which is very little, right? But I can share some stuff uh, from a command perspective from what I've seen. But if I don't listen to the stories from other, other folks and how they used their skills to adapt and, and, and actually uh, become better in what they're doing, I, I, I'm, I'm not able to bring that back to where I'm at and my guys. So why would I not take time to learn from these guys? I think, that's well, I, problem. I think that's another problem. The fire service is that we... And uh, here we go down a, down a path that probably shouldn't Let's walk go. down. Let's uh, go. But, but I, I'm I'm not afraid to be different. 
Um, and I'm not afraid it. to hold folks di- hold folks accountable for being different. Um, I, one of the things that my department that I asked for, and it's not really my department, it's our department. So let me just throw that out there real quick. It's not it's not my department. It's our department here. Is is I expect I expect my guys and gals to be different on the fire scene, um, and daily op- daily operations, daily behind the firehouse. Uh, different, and when I say different, I want to stand out. I want to be the guys and gals that they say, "Hey, look at those folks that are coming. They're coming to work. They're not coming to sit on the sideline." In fact, if you come to the sideline, I'm, I'm sorry, if you come to a fire that I'm at and you want to sit on the sideline, don't come. Why come? Stay home. Don't yeah. come. You're wasting. You're wasting my time. You're wasting my energy. And I'm trying to figure out why you're here. And so again, going down the side, going down, down. Oh, I love it. My bad, bro. You got me all excited for a second. Sorry. Are you kidding me? I want to. I want to explore that further. Who the hell? Yep. Like, here's my thing, right? It's like when you go to when you go to fires. Like, I want to practice my craft. I don't get to do that every day. I don't no. get to put my skills to the test every single day. I can I can train at the firehouse. We can stretch lines. We can thump doors. But until you get out in the field, and how often are you able to practice your craft? How often are you allowed to take? those training evolutions and put them to practical experience. It's not every day for most people. There's a lot of fire departments in this country. You said last night, you guys went to work twice last night, which is an absolute home run. That's two more times than I went last night. Right. (laughs) So it's like you had opportunity to practice your craft last night, whether it's from a command perspective, an officer Mm -hmm. perspective, the chauffeur, the backstep guy, everybody had a chance to, to practice and put that to work last night twice. I didn't. That's right. I didn't. But that, so that it's like, it, yeah, go, go. No, you, no, go. So I was just going to say, so when called upon to do so, why do you want to go be a spectator? Mm-hmm. Like, I want to put it to work. I want to put what I've put my, my sweat equity into. I now want to make it pay off on the mm-hmm. fire ground. I can't stand guys that want to stand around. I just no. don't get it. No, I, 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 don't, I don't either. I don't, I don't know why you signed. I don't know why you signed an application and if you didn't want to do something. Uh, and, and I think that's part of our part of the problem in the fire service from the volunteer side of it all the way up to career side sure. of it is hundred percent. And, and I'm not knocking I'm both. I'm a volunteer chief and a career chief. I'm not I'm not knocking both I'm not knocking any of that. But we have to have a a desire, we have to have a passion, we have to have a a, a standard. I think that's power that's something that I that, that I want to throw out there is our standards. Standards of mm. excellence. Um, and I think we we, we tend to fall short of our standards, standards and expectations. And we allow, we allow folks to become, well, I, I hear, here you go. You ever heard the word minimum expectations, minimum, sure. guy, minimum standards, right? All the what time. Is, what is just below minimum expectations? Failure. Mm-hmm. And why are we okay with that? Why are, and right. I think a lot of departments, a lot of officers, chiefs, I mean, even, even company officers are, are okay with, Hey, as long as I have somebody in the backseat or my driver, I'm okay with this. And I'm not. I'm not. I don't. I, don't, I think the fire service is 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 better than that. Because you know what? This may sound this may sound uh, cliche, but those folks are holding their breath till we get there. If there's a fire, if there's trapped inside that house, and so why am I willing to not give everything for them? And and I, I have I have a big deal of uh, of for them. Um, I'm I'm a, I'm a true believer of for them. Uh, I know that's a big. I know that's being used all over the, all over the country about you know with with conferences and stuff like that. But I've always believed them. We're we're here for them, um, and I think that that's that's something that should be in, in one of your mission statements in the fire service is over the front door. We're here for them, and I truly believe that. But I think we're we're there. I gotta find some other words other than them to use. Well, we've them. gotten we've gotten to a place that, and this is what concerns me. Right. Is like we've gotten to a place where we have to specifically say we're here for them Mm -hmm. when years ago it didn't have to be said because it was understood. Right. Right. And I, I think we've gotten now to a point in the American fire service, and that is everybody and everything incorporated within. So volunteer paid on call career and everything in between. We're all assigned to do the same job. Right. Right. And there should be a level of expectation that comes with being called a firefighter. And obviously, right. the delivery of services is different everywhere you go. There's no Absolutely. doubt we have yep. terrible firefighters and we have super proficient and, and professional and excellent firefighters. And we have everything in between. You're right. There has to be there has to be a higher standard than minimum. I agree with you 100 percent. But yep. the fact that we have to 
spell out what the job actually entails this day and age is crazy to me. And the fact that we have to always talk about them, Mm -hmm. it was just understood. In my world, it's still just understood. Me too. It's just we're... We're here for the public. There, right. that's what we do. Like we yeah. shouldn't have to talk about that, but we've gotten to a place where we focus more on ourselves mm-hmm. than others, and because of that, the societal shift has infiltrated the fire service, mm-hmm. and so we have to now be specific about why we're here and what we do. Right, I, it's crazy to me. Well, I, I think it's I think it's a, a dangerous slope we're traveling right now in the fire service. Yes, I, I truly I truly believe that. I, I truly think that that. From the 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 reasons that we what's on your fire truck, what's on your badge, what's on your t shirts that you wear, right? And and what are we what is our motto for the citizens that we serve? And so they they, they expect us, right? They expect ex- excellent. And 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 I'll be honest with you, there there's a lot of departments, even around my area, that can't that can't give excellence. I agree. You know and, I, and I'm, not knock, I'm not knocking any any fire department around me or anywhere else. You know, even my department. Is there some, there's days right. where you can't provide excellence. So I'm on I agree with you. Door, right. So it's just not. It's just not. Look at everybody else. Look at your own front door. And yep. and so, but I, I the you, you can't tell me. Well, I think the problem is is, is if, and I think one of the problems is is we're promoting, and we're we're we're, we're getting leaders that have forgot. And, and, and that may be wrong, but I truly, I think that, and, and, and that's the, not everybody has the same passion as you and I do. Right. But I know you and I know Jeremy, you and I have the passion, right? My passion is different than yours and yours is different than mine, but we still have the same passion for those that we serve. And, and one of those, and I think a lot of the problem that we have is they're here for paychecks. Could be. And could be in that, or they're just here because. Hey, I want the T-shirt from a volunteer side of it, for a career sure. side of it, and 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 I don't, I, I think, I, you know, I love I love the training side of it of the, of the fire service because I think that's where you shine. If you can shine on the training grounds, you can shine in the, on the fires. Um, and I, I know we kind of went all over the place. I apologize, but no, you're okay. I, think, I agree. I, I just don't. I don't. I don't. I'm not a fan of the of forgetting the why. And I don't, and I'm not a fan of forgetting why we're here to serve. Uh, and I don't think that, uh, and I don't know how to change that other than, other than doing conferences or going to conferences or doing what we're doing with podcasts and sharing the problem with the podcast, the problem with the conferences, the problems with the, the, the FDICs and all the stuff that we have going on. And I'm not knocking any of it is the wrong people are going. And you know what I mean by the wrong people? You're missing out on the folks that are making the decisions who don't care about the fire service anymore. Not about the ones that are, we want the folks going. Yeah, it's about the ones that we go back to these fire from these fire conferences and we learn what we're learning. And I might have said that wrong. I apologize. But I'm, what, I'm, what I'm trying to say is, let me let me rephrase. Is is we're sending the passionate firefighters out to these conferences that want to go, that want to better themselves, that want to become better, right? And then we go back and we try to teach these things to the firefighters or your department. And they're sitting on the sidelines. Those guys are sitting on the sidelines making fun of those well, that are going yeah. to the services. That's where I was going with that. I hope yeah. that makes sense. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, it makes, it makes a lot of sense. And there's a couple, couple of things that are just running through my brain while, while you go down this road. Is One, it goes back to something I say all the time is we need the good people to promote. Yeah. We need people that have the passion and the fire behind them to get into decision-making positions. We can't. We're doing the fire service a disjustice that if, if you're a guy that has incredible passion and training and knowledge, but you want to stay back and, and remain a backstep firefighter, as much as I respect that and we need you there, I also need you at the table where we make decisions because a lot of times we have the wrong people making decisions, and when we have the wrong people making decisions – the backstep guys can't influence those decisions anymore because the people that are making the decisions are threatened by the experienced backstep guy. And we have this disconnect now more than ever. What we need is a department like yours where you encourage your people to be different, which Mm -hmm. allows them to have the latitude and longitude to make decisions Mm -hmm. that best represents the public that you serve and the department that you wear on your sleeve. That's what we need. No, I agree. I, I don't. I think you. I think you, you. have to be able to let these guys do their jobs. I think if yes. you manage them or, or you micromanage them too much, they're not. A, they're not going to want to give you their excellence. They're not going to be a hundred percent. 
they're always going to think, well, I'm doing something wrong. I, I have, I have, a, I have a statement I tell my guys when they get there is, uh, is engine 37, go to work. I don't, that's all I need to tell them. I don't need to tell them anything else. Go to work, you know, and, and they, they, they handle business. And, uh, you know, I, I go back to what you're asking about talking about your, your, your backs, your back seaters, your, your, the guys that's face backwards and, and face forward. Mm. I, I'd love sitting out in the, in behind on a, on the, on the, uh, the back step of a fire truck or on the front bumper of the fire truck, just with the firemen, not with the, not with the officers, just with the firefighters and say, Hey, let me ask you some questions. Let's talk. Let's talk job. Let's talk. Let's talk business. You know, where where do you see? Let's just say where where do you see this going? Whatever X Y Z question you want to offer, and get their feedback. You know, and they, and I think you, I think we forget sometimes of the ones that are sitting backwards are sometimes one of the ones of the most smartest ones on that. Hundred percent. And and I, and I think we forget that. And I think we we tend to become, uh, uh, what's the word? Uh, what I'm looking for. I think some folks think uh, threatened. We're, we're, I think we feel threatened by by some of the folks that are more uh, that are more into the job, that are more knowledgeable, that want to succeed and want to get outside of the their fire department or their their county, their state, and go to these conferences or become better at training and teaching. And and I think uh, you know I think there are folks that are that are that are very much. Um, uh, that threatened by that, and I, and I and I've seen it. I've seen it from myself. Is people get threatened because of what we do. Um, and Jeremy, you know, you and I talked about that too. As folks that folks that are threatened, it's not about the threat that we can provide. It's the threat of what we can show. That's and, right. And what we're doing, right? Or and, <clears throat> or how we show their weakness. Exactly. And I think that's one of the biggest problems is their Expose weakness. Them. They're afraid that you're getting exposure. That's the word I look for. You're being exposed. You're you're exposed because they're sitting on the recliner and you're moving and you're working around circles. And and so I'm a fan of, of bringing a recliner to a training tell and say if you're or a, re, or a training evolution and saying here's your recliner if you don't want to be here there's a recliner sit down and watch you know you don't have yeah. to be here. I I agree with all that I think that I think the fun thing too right is like creating an environment where that is is uh, is welcomed I mean yeah. you have to I I've also seen it go too far the other way too like you have to allow your guys to be in a recliner. You do. You have to allow for the downtime, and you have to be respectful of that. And I know a lot of firehouses, like, before lunch, it's business. After lunch, that's your time to unwind because we might be out all night. Or, you know, in the volunteer world, it's, you know, drill night is three hours of training, and then we're going to – and then it's social or yes. or whatever it is, right? So you have to find a way to be respectful you do. Of, of the process, and you can't just shove it down. Like, no. too often it's like the guys that go to the, all this extra training and the guys that are out there throwing ladders and stretching lines, they pound their chest, and they go, mm-hmm. look at us. You mm-hmm. need to be more like us. And those guys, And some of the guys are like, you need to take a half a step back. Yeah. There's finding a balance in all of it, right? Absolutely. But, Something you mentioned that really stands out to me is the fact that you're willing to take a knee at the back bumper mm-hmm. with your guys mm-hmm. and be able to have conversation with the guys that are in the trenches mm-hmm. and not have pushback by your company officers because they think you're going around them. A lot of places where you have a command staff that is in tune with their, with their backstep guys, that middle management can sometimes get jealous because what are you talking about? Why, are, why am I not involved in the conversation? And so you have to, again, as as the leader of an organization, you have to set the tempo to understand that some of this informalness or we need to skip rank every once in a while because that's how we can get better answers. Yeah. People have to be comfortable with that process, but it comes from the top. 100% right. comes from the You're top. Right. And, and it's not a, it's not trying to get I gotcha moments. It's not right. trying right. to That's not what it is. No, it's right. not at all. It's just what are we doing? What can I do to make you better? Or what? What can I do to bring something better to to you to help you make you help your job, help our department, help our team? Where am I falling down and, on you? And I, and I think I, I want to know that as a chief. I think there's yes. lots of chiefs out there that don't want to know that, and but and they and they choose not to use that opportunity to 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 be able to sit down with their teams. Um, and but I, I want to know if I'm failing. I mean, I think that's, that's important as a leader. And, and or or is there a place where I can become or we can become better? Am I missing something? I'm not here 24 hours a day with these guys living here, right? So at the end of the day, when I go by, when I go home or whatever, they they get more comfortable. They're back with their family, and their team here, and and they they start opening opening up and discussing things. And when I'm here, sometimes they might be afraid from a chief perspective, right? That's right. 
or even from a battalion chief's perspective, or they don't want to open up as much. And so, uh, if you can just, uh, if you can just break the break bread, does that make kind of deal? That kind of break that bread, break that. Yeah, hundred percent. Look, guys. Hey, I, I'm. I just want to. I just want to visit. I want to see what what's on your mind. How can you help me? That I can help you. And and I, that's not there again. Jeremy, I think some of that in the fire service where we're missing that. I think we're missing that from a leading perspective. Once I get a title, look at me. You know, does that well, make sense? It, I, I agree with you 100. It makes a ton of sense, and I'm going to take it one step further. You said Engine 37, right? That's one yes. of your engine companies, right? So Engine yep. 37. Whenever Engine 37 goes out the door, you tell them when they get on scene, go to work. And there's right. a level of expectation. They know their job. They know their priority in their jobs. They know who's supposed to do what. And it's a well-oiled machine because you have expectations. And you set the expectation for your company to know mm -hmm. what their responsibilities are. And then you allow them to go do that. Right. Take it one step further. If you're trusting in them mm -hmm. to go all in on your model your way of operating you as the chief have to trust that they're going to follow through on what the expectations are because you've laid out a plan right on the back side they need to be confident that you have their back Absolutely. and most fire departments fire chiefs ask 110 percent of their people and then when their people ask the fire chief for something we fall down on them quite often right and it's finding that balance from the top down, it's not, and it's when the bottom needs something, mm -hmm. the top needs to respond. Absolutely. And with what you're talking about, you model that. And I, I love it. that. I appreciate but it. So many places expect everything from their people and give nothing in return. I, I agree. I agree. Yeah. I'll give, you, I'll give you one more. I think that's a big, a big, um, morale booster. If you want to throw some morale in there too, is do it. Yeah. Is, 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 um, Chiefs, put your gear on. Love it. Get out there and work with them. I'm a working chief. I mean, I, there's times and places Sweat. that you, yeah, yeah, so I mean, we were we were sweating for four hours Sunday at a fire, at a junkyard fire. You're right. If if they're working, you should be working. You know. Um, yeah, you have your command staff, you have your battalion chiefs, you have your 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 company officers that can handle business, right? I I, I don't mind going and getting dirty. In fact, I'd rather be in there with those guys and sitting outside and being a command. I much right. rather I'd much rather be dirty with those guys. You know that, and so yep. but but there's times and places that you have to have that command presence. You have to have somebody in charge. You have to have somebody making the decisions. Right? I don't need to make decisions. <laughs> I just need to be there to be to to monitor and let them handle the business. Yeah, I <laughs> something as simple as putting your gear on. Yeah, goes a very long way in in um in how people view you. Yes. And view what the expectation is on the fire ground. And, and frankly, if if the chief's got his gear on, you know, the other chiefs reporting in are going to have their gear on. Well, they you know, and it's do, right. It's set. Well, it sets the expectation. Yeah. The table's now set. Right? right. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. No. And in fact, I mean, how many times have you seen somebody with a white helmet step over a line when a line's being pulled? Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Get down and pick up that line. You can as you're walking your way that way. Right. Give a hand. You know, we're we're doing more with less, right? We got man, we got less like, firemen on the. Man. We are like, stop, man, I'm interrupting you. I'm going. You're, you got my no, mind good. Man. But we're you know, fire service is light staffed. We're not FDNY. We're not Philly. We're not you know. We're not big departments. We're light. The bread and butter of the fire service is light staffed, right? And, and and could you? I mean, is that is that maybe we can say hundred percent? I need you. I need yeah. every single set of hands on the fire ground. You're absolutely right. And but here's the deal: is I may have a title that says chief on it right great who cares take that out it says firefighter fire department right, right. you're no yep. better than you're no better than the rookie if yep. there's something that needs to be done do it don't walk by yeah. something you know and and i think that's the problem i don't have a problem humping hose i don't have a problem stopping and saying i'm gonna catch plug and i think there's a lot of people out there that's like oh you're doing too much you should just be a chief eh wrong why are you sitting on the sidelines letting everybody else do when you should be helping too well, who's to say what the definition of a chief is? You're right. You're right. Right? That's Are you you're going to you're going to box me in with a title? That's fine. Explain to me what my parameters are then. You're right. Because frankly, I'm the fire chief. I get to write the job description. Yeah. Yeah. But the, the other <laughs> thing is, is it, and I love it. Write your own job yeah. description. And, and and guess what? That description can change. 
That's right. It's you fluid, know, and, man. And I, and I hate I hate to tell the viewers and those that are I have hate. Oh, by the way, I have haters. Just throwing it out there. We have. Oh, we all yeah. have well, haters. you and I, you and I both. So don't yeah, don't you I, worry I about have, that I one. So bit. many haters are waiting in line to get in the get in the hater line. It's good, so, and I'm fine with that. But here's the deal: is is I, you're you're no different than those that are pulling the hose. There's, you're no different than those that are that are catching the plugs. You still have an obligation, and you still have a responsibility. So do do your work. Go and do your job. Yep. And That's go it. help. Yeah. Where does this come from from you, you know, with your background and stuff, growing up where you are today as a chief of a career fire department? I mean, a lot of these values had to be instilled in you early on, I would think, in your career, whether it was through schooling, your upbringing, or yeah. early days in the firehouse. Where does you know, it come from? You're going to laugh. You're probably going to laugh. I'm a preacher's kid. I love it. And I knew he, that. Uh, you know, now knew, that you say gonna, that, I, I yeah. absolutely. What did I say when we opened up this episode? Yep. The way you carry yourself with, with a, a smile and a polite and, and gentleman-like demeanor? Yeah. That makes sense, bro. Yeah. It makes, a, it makes a ton of sense. I'm a preacher's kid. My family, I, I was raised in the preacher's kid. I'm, I, 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 I never went too far off track. You know, preacher's kids, oh, as soon as they get, get to leave the house, they go down the wrong track. Yeah, they go nuts. Uh, yeah. I think that's where I get my passion to serve. Um, mm. You know, I think that's where I get my passion to serve others and want to be, want to be better for them. Uh, and, and, and make a change, be a change agent rather than a follower. Um, and I, and I think that's kind of where, uh, you know, I still learn every day. Um, and, and I, I learn how to uh, want to be better and I want, I want my team to be better and I want those that are surrounding me to be better as well. Um, and I think that's where I get it from is my family, um, is seeing, being able to help others growing up and opening doors and sharing sharing what they know and, and you know everybody has everybody has needs right and so uh that's just something in the fire service i love to do is help others and so that's kind of where yeah kind of where that laid i guess if it makes any sense no it makes a lot of sense and and frankly it it absolutely makes sense i mean i can i can just i can understand exactly where you're coming from i was thinking about this earlier yeah. just on some other things that i was toying with is like i was terrible for a long time like, I grew up with incredible parents and, and great family values, and uh, I grew up in an upper-middle-class neighborhood, so I really didn't have many struggles in life and, and so on. But, man, I think about the, the individual I was years ago versus who I am today, like, especially in the fire service. Like, I knew everything. You couldn't, you couldn't tell me anything. I knew everything across the board. Um, and now, fast forward today, at 47 years old and almost 30 years in the fire service, um, I feel so humbled that I don't know jack shit. Yeah. And yeah. you know, it's I've I've come I've this like full full circle moment for me is like really understanding that the person I was years and years ago wasn't who I wanted to be. Right. And it took me a long time to figure that out. Um and I'm better for it today. Yeah. Um and I ch I challenge so many people that we we fall in a in a place of complacency in knowing what you know and, and not pushing yourself to learn more or do more. And when you do that, the walls close in on you and, and yeah. you're in an echo chamber where you don't get to grow. Mm -hmm. And and I've you know, I'm so fortunate for National Fire Radio because it's made me grow as a human being mm -hmm. and especially not just in my personal life, but certainly in the fire service. Yes. And I come today where I get to hang out with Ryan McCormick and, and talk shop and it's like I've learned a ton of nuggets today and every interaction I have and everything that I get to do yeah. makes me better and I've become a lot more humble and accountable than mm -hmm. I've ever been. Um, and I'm grateful for who I am today. But I can see you, man, just always being really just on the straight and narrow, man. I love that. Yeah, I love I mean, it. There's, there's nothing. I mean, I get, I get ridiculed. I get, I get my, you know, what do you want to call it? You know, busting my balls, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Like, hey, look at you. It's all good, man. I'm cool with that. That's just who I, that's just who I am. I'm, I'm perfectly fine with that. And, and yep. uh, there's nothing, I'm no, I'm no different than the rest of the guys around the house. Right. I, I'm just not. And I, and I, and I choose not to be, um, it's just, it's just my character. And like, yeah. I think I think what you your your few minutes of your discussion a few minutes ago, hundred percent goes back to you in one word character, and and, and who and who you are right, and yeah. so and I think that's part of I just think that's what it is and I, I don't you know yeah I mean I I I'm, I might be different than than those other ones but I still love what I do right I still love the job I still love what what and I'm have I, I'm no I don't I don't 
look any different than at you or anybody else that I, that I meet that I stand out. Does that make sense? I no, I, I get it completely. Sure, of course. Now, yeah. where does where did the where did the love for the fire service come from? I mean, yeah. I know so, being a preacher's kid, you know, yeah. service service is important to you. Yes, sir. Um, but where did it come from? Like, what what are your roots with it? Yeah, so I uh, I was born and raised in, in I'm gonna say Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, and you call it what oh, did yeah. you call it? Lang- Lancaster. Lancaster. Yeah, right. Right. Oh so, yeah, they they hang yeah. me for saying it that uh, way. Out there. My bad. So born and raised in Lancaster County. Um, moved, uh, became a volunteer, junior volunteer, uh, in Manhound Township at Eden Station, uh, that lived, uh, Station 24, it's just down the street from us, uh, was there as a kid, when the doors, when I, when my parents could get me down there, I was there, helped with the, uh, the, the Christmas tree selling and, and all that kind Love of it. stuff, you know, and going down cleaning fire trucks and the barbecue, uh, uh, you know, going selling barbecue and helping out there. Uh, sure. And so that was just that was my that was my um, beginning of the fire service for me, uh, and then um, we actually moved uh, moved to Arkansas, and then I went to college in Chicago outside Chicago. After Chicago and college there, I, uh, I moved back to Pennsylvania, uh, Lancaster County, and became uh, and worked for a, a company as an engineer for about. Mm-hmm. A little over a year, year and a half. Started, was still in the fire department there. Got back on the fire. What kind department. of en- what kind of engineering? Uh, um, plastic engineering. Okay. The plastics, the Coke bottles, the uh, uh, blow. So manufacturer. Yeah. You were in the yeah. manufacturing sector. Yes, okay. sir. Um, yeah. So, so in, in, I just I, so went to school for, and I, I was like, man, this is just I, honestly, I hated it. I Desk hated job. It. Yeah. Desk well, job. It, just, it yeah. wasn't. It wasn't for me. Um, right. I always, I always had in the background of the fire service or police department, fire service, whatever. Mm-hmm. So anyway, uh, move forward. Um, Little Rock. My parents were lived in Little Rock, Arkansas, and I came down and I just tested for the Little Rock Police Department, Little Rock Fire Department, and um, uh, hoping for a bone to get right. And sure. the police department called me first, so I uh, don't, don't, you know, this is one of those. Bad it's all right. We'll, we'll keep it between us. Don't yeah, worry about yeah. it. We'll keep it between so, us. Yeah. Was became a police officer for a little over six years, but I was a paramedic be, during that as well. And then I was just at a place where the fire service just keep drawing to me, and uh, and I transitioned over to the fire service and been in the fire service for twenty twenty three years full time. Um, and uh, awesome. I uh, just kind of I landed here at Little Rock and Bryant and. Uh, Arkansas, and now we're in a suburb of, of, of uh, Little Rock, is Alex, city of Alexander, and became a chief about a year and a half ago. And we, I love it. It's a small department. We run, we burn. Uh, we have a great team, and uh, just kind of moving forward. Does that make sense? And just, yeah. just, just love the passion. That's a quick and dirty version of it. No, that's cool. I mean, you know, it's some. Oh, I grew up in it. Generational. Yeah. I mean, you, you did not. It nope. was just down the road, and it was the excitement of, you know, I mean, so many kids remember the first time seeing a fire engine, you know, yeah. go down the street, and everybody takes pause and walk. Well, not today. Yeah. I don't think people even pay attention to a fire truck on the street anymore, man. No. They really no. don't. No, they don't. They don't. They don't. I don't you know, know Main, don't street, Main Street USA, the fire siren would blow in the center yeah. of town, mm-hmm. right? And yeah. people were like, oh, there's a fire call, because it didn't happen every day like it does now. It happens 8, 10, 12, 15 right. times a day, Right. And so the sirens don't even, towns don't even have fire sirens anymore, right? Yeah. Siren would blow, blue yeah. lights, the butcher runs out, like all that iconic Norman Rockwell shit, right? Yeah. And th- like, and then the fire truck would drive down Main Street with yeah. like your neighbor in the back of it. And mm-hmm. you're like, hey, that's like Mr. Smith, right? And yeah. it's like, people would take pause and look at that. And yeah. today, I don't even think people pay attention to a fire truck driving down the road. No. They really don't. No, there, there's a... You know that remember that there's that that term that, that saying pride ownership and that kind of stuff you know ownership and, and sure. honor you know and I think when we were growing up and, and we're not old yet we're getting there but we're not old just yet right what back in the back in that there that tradition that pride that ownership of being a part of a volunteer being a part of a, a department is 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 going down that Main Street USA going to fire calls man that was that was big stuff man. That was something I still have a sense of pride. Yeah, I still have a sense of pride. And we should. We're, we're, yeah, I agree, man. I agree. There's just something about it inside you as you're 
turning the corner and you're coming down a busy street and there's people on the curb or on the sidewalk or in front of the strip mm-hmm. mall and you're going by, you, you almost like, I don't know, for me, it's almost like a gut check of like, yeah, yeah this is still important to me. Like, well, I still recognize those people. But, Jeremy, it is. It, I, think it, I think it's so – I think it's – some people have it as just as a job or just as a career. And it really – and really, in my mind, it's not just that. It's, it's a serving heart. Um, it's a servant – it's a servant's heart of – I agree. Of these folks that we're going to serve. You know, yeah, how many times do we go, have to go pick up, of, uh, you know, grandma or, or Mary sure. Joe or whatever on the side of a of – you know, they fall and they can't get up kind of cause, right? Right. But, but that's we, – we just – we have to. We can't forget the reason of our why we're doing it, and, and and what is what what the 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 what you're able to share and get back from. Because we're always yeah, you know, we're always going to have a need. There we'll always have a need for the fire service. We'll always have a need for for paramedics and ambulance service and and all that kind of stuff. But but it's not just that we're just not a number anymore. We don't 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 become a number. You know, be, don't don't just say. We, we're here for those guys. We're here for you guys. You know, that's what we're here for. That's why we, that's why we, yeah. chose, that's why we chose to wear the shirt. Oh, a hundred percent. And you know, I just think about, you know, we talk about, um, recruitment mm-hmm. in the fire service. And I, I think about how iconic that main street firehouse was years ago Yeah, and how people took time to stand and take pause as that fire engine pulled out and drove down the street or, uh, or people would be more conscious and pull over right away. And we're so distracted in in our, in our energy and mindset is in so many other places. We've lost like the civic mindedness of it as the public. Yeah. And that is detrimental for the recruitment of what we're doing Mm -hmm. because you know, where years ago a parent would stop and take pause as the fire truck passed and even, you know, say to their kids like, oh, you know, uh, you know, Mr. Mr. Jones is a fireman. Yes. You know, the butcher, you know, the butcher, the gar- the guy at the grocery store. Right? Yeah. Just that small town, hometown, Main Street stuff. Yeah. It has gone away. And, and I'm not vilifying where we are today. I'm just saying that that is something that I truly miss. It's that iconic nostalgia that I grew up with, with yeah. just an utmost respect for authority. Mm-hmm. And it was like, you know, you you had you you had the utmost respect for adults and people of power and yeah. it was police firemen the postman like yeah. all those things and i yeah. we've gotten away from that yes. and um and and that has been detrimental to the service that we provide no well, doubt also i think the other thing you, you kind of you left out a little bit that, that i remember is, is do it that 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 your jobs allowed you to go if you were a volunteer firefighter oh yeah to go yeah. and help your community and we have and and those days are so far far fetched anymore that they they don't they don't let you do it or they don't care right and and I think the vol- I see here the volunteer side of it is we are, the volunteer world is dwindling down it's slowly oh, yeah. it's becoming harder and harder and harder to get folks uh, to to be to volunteer when we grew up the volunteer firehouses were were packed at nighttime or the weekends right and people were there and now we can't we can't get folks to fill an application out. And because, because of time, you know, people, uh, time is, time is valuable. Everybody's, everybody's time is valuable. And so, and and, you know, and and it's a scary time, I think, in the fire service for those that live in the volunteer um, districts Uh, because, uh, and now, now granted, let me get me back up. It's different throughout the nation, throughout the United States. There's, you know, for sure. Northeast and then there's, there's plenty of different areas, but, but you may be, just you might have five or six or nine guys coming to a fire where you have you know and there's that's all you got minimum staffing like staffing and and sometimes you may not even have that man that's not even gonna have that no let's get an engine on the road with three and get a line on the fire and our mutual aids coming behind us you're hoping you are hoping for three sometimes around here yeah 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 so yeah Yeah, and and it's not just there it's everywhere i think what we have to do though and i think what's really important is um we have to become more dynamic and we have to recognize, you know, I think a lot of the other, the other thing too, Ryan, just to back up, because I, I agree with you 100% on all of that. I think the other real conversation too is um, so much of the United States, the American fire service is made up of literally neighbors helping neighbors. Yeah. And it's not these um, wannabe departments that, you know, have uh 
gun ho bunk in, mm-hmm. going to 20 runs a day. There are the majority of the fire service in America are going out the door 20 times a month yes. for field fires, brush mm-hmm. fires, helping their neighbors type yeah. thing. It's only when you get around, like in the Northeast, it's obviously a much different game here, but yeah. you get out into rural America, that's a lot of what the fire service is. It is. And to, to shake a stick at the fire service in general and say, like, this is how it has to be and this is the yeah. way it needs to be, it's not possible no. in a broad stroke. There's yeah. so many nuances and details that are being left out when we talk about the American Fire Service. You're right. It's a broad stroke, and it, it can't be done that way, right? No, it can't. And, and you, you know, you said you're, you're, you're there, you said something a minute ago. Like, I'm not going to walk down the path with the OSHA's new new ideas. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. That kind of oh. stuff. I'm, not, I'm not even going to go down that road uh, because I could. And we could spend all day doing that, but I'm not sure. Doing, uh, but you're putting you're 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 taking away your protection. If you're going, the, your guide, if there's some, they're using that OSHA thing for a second, right? Is those expectations are unrealistic in in a lot of the service, um, and so you're you're you are. I mean, there's fire departments like you said that have that are running out of 1960s, 1970s fire trucks for the first hour. Hundred percent. And hundred percent. Why are we? Why is why are why is the why are we not trying to fix that? Why are we not trying to fix these guys getting better equipment, getting better? training getting better um fundings you know fun don't don't people have to beg for for their stuff why are we having to beg in the fire service for in order to protect your city protect your community and protect your neighbors right i don't i'm a i don't understand that i don't i never have i get it i know where it's coming from but i don't understand why we're not putting us first and because at the end of the day are are we comfortable with letting something burn i'm not i'm gonna give you everything i can and and, you know and 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 that's a lot of what it is in rural America. It's yeah. it, like whether you're on the fire department or not, if there's a fire in your mm-hmm. town, you know, you're coming out and, and helping. Yes. Yeah. And right. I, and it, it's go that's ahead. It. That's it. It's, it's what it's, yeah. it's, you know, it's what you can offer. It's just what you can, what you, what you have to offer. And, and I, and I applaud, I applaud everybody that, that does it as a volunteer. I, I really do. In fact, I would, I would, I would stand in line and shake their hand to say thank you for taking care of your community because because I think sometimes we have a uh, the word I say sometimes is a thankless job. Does that make sense? Oh, hundred uh, percent. And, and we don't get we don't get we don't do it for thank to being thankful. We're not that's not who that's not the pride deal. We're not pride. Don't thank. Don't have to. I don't need to be thanked. Uh, but but uh, if I could come and give everybody a high five as they're going through, you know, from a department, hey, great job. Thank you for doing what you're doing. Uh, I think that means something. And I think that that's the other thing, Jeremy. I, going down the going down that road for a second. I think as leaders, we forget to say thank you. Agreed. Uh, I, I, you know, I think from an officer's perspective, battalion chiefs, chiefs. I think we forget to tell our tell our team thank you and being and how thankful you are for them more. And, and I think we just forget about that. Um, that goes a long ways, man. I think just 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 sharing that with somebody and saying thanks to somebody. Um, I think that 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 goes a long ways, and they'll do they'll move mountains. If they if they believe in that, I think I think a lot of it is not done intentionally. What happens is we take for granted the people around us, yes. and you know it's like me. I mean i I learned over time that you know through my career and then start of National Fire Radio, I took my family for granted. Yeah, that yeah. they were always going to be supportive and be behind me, even though I wasn't home much and yeah. traveling a ton, and I didn't put them first. You're right, and. And so I take them for granted. We yeah. take for granted. And, and the biggest, the, one of the biggest issues is usually the most active and the best guys we have, we come down harder on them than we do people that are no-shows or absent from the job. And it's because they're there all the time that we take them for granted for what their sacrifice and service is. You're right. And so we come down on them harder yeah. where we should be boosting them up and giving them all the tools. When I do my program, I talk about – Giving the winners everything. Give mm-hmm. the winners all the tools in the world to succeed. Yes. Yeah. Don't focus. The The losers are lost. They're gone. Mm-hmm. Yes. The average we could probably bring up, yep. but we need to double down on our winners, and yes. our winners win. Winners win. They make, they're, the, they're the game changers. So why are we pushing yeah. away our winners? I, I, like, you I, look, oh, we got a new fire chief, and all mm-hmm. these guys are pissed off and disgruntled. They don't want to work here anymore. They don't want to volunteer here anymore yeah. because this guy sucks. Right. And I, I just... Like it blows my mind. I know, I know. I don't. I don't do this job for me. I don't want my guys to do the job for me. I, I'm a just. I'm a figurehead, right? 
I, I got blessed to become uh, to to uh, get hired as a, as a leader of a department. But I don't want these guys to do it for me. I want these guys to do it for those that we serve, those that we that we choose to take care of, right? And and I I don't. But I want to give them the support. And I want to give them everything I can, right? That's what we're supposed to do, and and be just so, just be there for those guys, you know. And I agree. I agree. I think the fire service and the and we're in the public safety, um, us as as the as the guys that are in it, we put our family second. And I, I know I'm, I'm guilty of it, right? And I know you're yeah, talking 100%. about it. I think everybody is guilty of it. And I think that that we gotta we gotta reevaluate. Everybody has to reevaluate that. Um, this job will be here when you leave. Um, but the family are the ones going to be there forever. And, and so I think that's something that, that is a big, if there was something I could tell you down the road, and for those that are getting in, in the service, those that have, that have been in the services, maybe, maybe, maybe do a reevaluation of your priorities and, and prioritize a little bit more for family and, and yeah. do an extra, do a little extra nugget for them. But I, but I do believe Ryan, and I, I get pushed back on this and I've talked about it before. I also do believe, though, there is a time that you have to be all in on the fire service, yeah, especially early right. on. No, I, I, it's the yeah. you have to you yeah. you have to make that a priority in your life. Yeah, and I know people will push against me on that, and that's fine. Yeah, I'm not saying your whole career, whether volunteer mm-hmm. career, but when you first get in and mm-hmm. get going, mm-hmm. the only way it works is when you go all in at the get, oh, and I, then you can yeah. start. Once you figure out the job, the job, volunteer career, whatever it is, the job, when you figure it out and you start to understand how it works and what it's doing for you and what you're doing for it, then you start to take a few steps back where you can start maybe, and balancing is always a difficult word, but maybe where you can start balancing everything a little bit better than you were but you have to go all in on it you do you have to at the at the get there that's that that i'll I'll stand beside you on that one uh on that on that statement i won't stand behind you i'll stand beside you on that one you have to thank you yep and so uh, i think that's a that's a that's just a true statement it's factual so yeah we can't get we can't get lost i listen this whole work-life balance thing i get it man i get it trust me i totally get it um, and I struggle with it. I might not be a career fireman, but I struggle with it with my real job mm-hmm. with National Fire Radio. Yep. Then I have volunteer fire service on top of that that I'm super passionate about. That's right. Right. And then I have a family, four children, a mm-hmm. wife. Yeah. And I have all those responsibilities, too. Yeah. Something is always going to suffer. Yes. But the but the way I look at it is, is if I need I need you in the fire service, then there has to be an understanding that in the get you have to go all in to understand what it is. So that you can be a part of the system. You're right. And if you're if you're more focused on yourself in the beginning, then it's about you yep. and not the fire service. Mm-hmm. And I I take I take some pause with that and I say, well, I think you need to be all in on the fire service first and understand what the mission is. Yep. Because when you do, we no longer have to talk about them. Yeah. It's just understood. That's right. And that we have to get back to that it's just understood. And that that, that needs to be a t shirt. It's just understood. <laughs> it's and just understood. It's just understood. I, yeah. We don't need to understood. package it up. I don't, no. I don't, I don't. No, no, we don't need all the bells and whistles. We don't need all the, the big words. It's just understood. And, and if we can get back to that, uh, that's a great mission statement. It's just understood. Right. You know? Yeah. And if we can just yes. get back to that, that mindset of, of, uh, in the fire service, it's just understood. Man, I think there'll be a lot less headaches. And, and a lot, a, a lot you. less uh, um, uh, racking your head around around the smalls and a lot of things around the table that you really don't have to discuss anymore. And it's just, it just, yeah. it's, it's just that easy. So yeah, well, I mean, this is exciting, and, yeah. and the conversation is always good. But we were supposed to start off the <laughs> yeah. podcast talking yeah. about the conference that's yeah. coming up. Yeah. Um. You know, you have been you've put together the first in uh, conference in Little Rock, Arkansas. Um, it's coming up this year, September 11th through yes. the 14th. Mm-hmm. Um, I know September 11th, obviously, a sacred day in the fire service, and especially in the American history. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know you're being super respectful of that uh, for the opening of the conference. Yes. Um, and it's a it's a somber time, but it's also a time to celebrate our brothers and sisters Absolutely. and the job that we do as well. Yes. Um, and so it's it's quite fitting. But talk to me a little bit about First In and like how this all came about. Yeah. Yeah, so I was uh, again years ago. Uh, I was in the I was I was in the training division for 13 years, 
love I love training. I love teaching, and I love just being able to give back. And, and again, I don't know everything, but I love being able to. I just like to help others to learn. Um, we started. I, I started helping and going to these conferences and teaching at small places. And something that was missing in Arkansas was just a, just a just a, um, a a passionate training opportunity. And yeah. if that's if you can say that, um, sure. We not a lot of not a lot of folks left Arkansas at the moment at the time to go places to go to become better. So six seven years ago, I. Uh, I just reached out to some of my friends that I've networked with and said, hey, I want to do a two-day, three-day training event in Little Rock, Arkansas. And, and I didn't even have a name at the moment. I didn't, I didn't have a, a title of what I wanted to call it. It was just a get-together kind of deal, right? And so I was, we were able to, I was, got a few folks and on a weekend and brought, brought down uh, uh, Jeff and Gabe from Philly, um, you know, Chris Short, some guys from, from Houston, uh, just some guys I networked with, and we did did a uh, a weekend hot class. Uh, and then once we once I got that, and we finished that up. I realized, hey, this is something that's really people are wanting in Arkansas, right? And people are traveling yeah. to Arkansas. And so I decided I decided just to make it make it a little better with with me going and, and teaching with uh, with 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 Fast Forward, and I also taught with Task Force One in in the past. Uh, I was able. to to really become get some really good networks and good friends and and so I just started reaching out collectively to some guys to say hey what do you think if we do this uh, and one of one of my biggest supporters was Corley Moore um, Cor and, and he he I reached out to him and and I said here's my here's my idea what is your thoughts and he's like man I love it I'm on it let's do it and so that's just kind of where it went so I'm I'm on my my fifth year uh, with first in. Uh, of doing uh, of doing a conference in Arkansas, um, it's in Little Rock, September, like you said, Jeremy, September 11th through the 14th, three days of lecture from each uh, each uh, instructor coming. They're all, all of them are my friends. You're coming, um, yeah, and you're I'm coming excited. to present, yeah. Um, and so I can you let me tell you let me tell you who's coming and tell you kind of what it is and what we're doing is that what you is that what you would like me to do? Yeah, okay. absolutely. I mean, I have um, I got it up here, but go ahead, man, yeah. go through it. Tell so me what September, you got. September 11th. You kind of hit on it a minute ago. September 11th is very a very important day to me, and it was very uh, it was very diff it was a very difficult decision to do it on September 11th. I didn't know if I wanted to do it or not, and if I did, who would I want to come and and help? have a remembrance of that day. I mean, it has to, there's only a few folks that collectively that yeah, I would, in my mind, I want somebody speaking on 9-11. And so uh, I, I reached out to, to several, but Kirk Isaacson's the one that kept coming back. And so I asked him, I said, "Do you would you be willing to come on September 11th and just all day long speak to us? Speak to us about 9-11, what it means, why we should never forget, and where we're going from here. And then bring more passion in what you bring to your table, and, and yes. he, he and I, I truly believe that. I think sometimes it's, I may be wrong, maybe going down the wrong avenue, but I think people are forgetting with the reason of nine eleven, and what has what happened on nine eleven. And I don't want people to forget that. I know where I was. I know what I had to do. I know where I went on nine eleven, and I don't want others to forget why why we remember that day. Yes. And so. Uh, so Chief Kirk Isaacson is going to spend all day on 9-11 um, and for eight hours and just talk about just bringing it. I guess the best word says, you know, just bringing it. Um, and then on Thursday, uh, September 12th, uh, Andy Starnes, Eric Budd from Rescue, Rescue 3 from, FDI, or from D.C., uh, Todd Edwards, David Mellon will be talking. Um, and, and again... You're going to hear from each person. You're not going to have to pick which person you're going to go talk or listen to. You're going to get to hear from every individual that I talk to sitting in a, a large auditorium. And then on Friday, Jeremy, you're coming. Clyde Gordon, Scott Thompson, Corley Moore um, is going to end, end the day with uh, on that Friday of our lecture series. And then Saturday, we have three different um, hot classes that you can choose from. Uh, the Daggum Push, Kevin uh, Fluger and his team. Are coming up from Texas, all about uh, water management, water moving. Key hose donated 5,000 feet of hose to use. It's amazing. Um, and then you have the Philly Rit, 
and the fast guys are coming. Um, when I say the Philly Rick, Gabe and Jeff from Squad 72, they're coming over. And then Robert Ramirez made a mindset. Um, he's bringing his team, and it's a awesome. it's an eight hour day of just of just bettering ourselves. So, yeah. So that's kind of that's kind of the breakdown. Um, we still have room for anybody that wants to come. It's three hundred forty dollars for four days. Um, I, I don't know. Can't go you, wrong there. I don't know where you can beat that with those people that are, with those instructors coming. Uh, price range. Right. Hotels are nine nine dollars a month. I mean, no, 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 sorry, nine nine dollars a night. Um, right. And and the the lecture series is going to be all at the hotel at the convention center, so we don't have to go anywhere. Uh, Which is right next to the airport, right? So it's like all... Right beside the airport. Um, Yeah, so so it's all local. It's all local. And then uh, in the evenings, we're going to do a couple different uh, socials where we're going to be able to get everybody where they need to go. Uh, We're going to go down to the uh, Little Rock uh, local union. Man, they stepped up their game again and opened in their union hall and are going to have everybody down there for food and beer and stuff like that. And then then we got a couple of good things happening throughout the week as well. Awesome. Yeah, well, I'm excited. Yeah. Um, I'm excited. To be honest with you, uh, I am passing up on the New Jersey. We have the New Jersey conference every year is the same weekend. Oh, and I'm passing up on my hometown oh. turf to go to Arkansas. So man, thank you. I'm excited, man. I'm, I'm very excited to be a part of it um, and incredibly honored to uh, share the stage with, you know, those yeah. guys that are changing the fire service. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so it's pretty cool, man. I'm, I'm quite honored to be asked to be there. So thank you. No, thank means you. the world to me. Yes, sir. Yeah, it's going to be great. And I I just I think that, like, you know, there's so much work that goes into conferences Mm -hmm. and so much that goes in behind the scenes that people don't understand and realize. But the core value of it is finding something that was in need. People were seeking something more and they weren't getting it. And you're willing to bring it there for them. Yeah. yeah, Um, It's huge. Yeah. You know, I think the other thing is, is people I've realized that people don't like to travel so far to go learn. And yeah. And they just don't, and that's okay. So um, that's why I bring it to Arkansas. Nothing, you know, bring it, bring it to Arkansas, and, they can, and folks in Arkansas can come. But, man, we have people coming from all over the United States. We have people flying in from all over. So it's just not an Arkansas-based conference, if that makes sense. Right. People, people are, are – we got students coming from all over, and I'm excited. Um, it's just going to be – it's just going to be fun, you know. It's just going to be fun to – to learn and just get re-energized. I think that's the biggest thing of a fire conference. If you don't go to my fire conference, go to someone's conference. You know, I, I don't. It's not. A, it's never about just me. Go somewhere. Uh, get get yourself better and, and get yourself uh, re-energized. Because I think when you leave these places, Jeremy, you become more energized. You get passionate. Agreed. You're lighter. You're, you're, you walk. You walk lighter. You get you get excited about going back to the fire station and sitting behind. Uh, on the engine bay and on the couch or around a table and and talking about what you learned or what you heard and just you know just bringing it back and that's big some of the some of the best experiences i have had were impromptu conversations and Mm -hmm. get-togethers and meetings and late nights yeah you know at, at different conferences and the only way you can expose yourself to opportunity is you have to make yourself available to have opportunity and um, and it takes stepping out of your comfort zone and traveling or going somewhere or even just a local fool's group yeah. or a lecture that's being offered within an hour's drive. You know, if if you have any inkling that you're looking for something more or you're unhappy where you are, yeah. I promise you there's an incredible world out there and all you have to do is just take a jump. Just take a leap. Just walk just through take the a door. Leap. Just walk through the door. That's it. Yeah. Just walk through. The door. You don't like it? Go home. That's right. That's, right. That's exactly right. You don't. You may. You may walk in and you don't like it. Turn around. And go back out. It's okay. But yeah. I promise you. I promise you this. If you do, if you're willing to walk through the door, as Ryan McCormick says, walk through the door. If you're mm-hmm. willing to do that, you will find something there. Yes. That you find value in. Oh, you and, will. And I think we're in such an incredible place today in the fire service where anybody can find anything they're seeking. Like you have more opportunity today than ever before to find something that you want or need or something you didn't even know you needed and you find it. Um, you didn't used to have that. No. And today you have that all around you. It's just now it's up to you. Mm-hmm. You don't have the excuse anymore, right? Um, like you don't have the excuse to say you can't find it. Mm-hmm. You can you can find anything you're looking for. Man, it is at your fingertips. 
That's it, bro. It's at your fingertips. That's it. And, and, and I, I agree with and you. It is. And then, you know, you're, 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 you're landing the plane here, I think. But, uh, but I, I will say is, you know, your choice, your decision. But at the end of the day, don't complain if you're not getting better. That's it. You got to take ownership in your own yeah. shit, man. Yes. That's it. Whether yeah. it's on the fire ground, in the firehouse, on the training grounds, going to conferences, bettering yourself, yep. in your marriage, being mm-hmm. a parent, whatever it is. That's right, Jeremy. You have to step up and take ownership that's of right. it. And when you don't, mm-hmm. that's when you're pointing the finger that's right. and you're not fixing anything in front of you. That's right. Absolutely. That's it, pal. Yeah. Love Ryan it. McCormick, man, I appreciate you very, very much for joining me today yes. uh, on the podcast. Again, talk about a first in fire conference, Little Rock, Arkansas, September 11th to the 14th. You got some of the biggest names in the American Fire Service coming to Little Rock. Uh, three days of conference, right? Three, uh, two days of, of nope. lecture, September three, 11th, three, three days. Three days lecture, one day hot. Beautiful. Yeah. Be Beautiful. Awesome. And where can they where can they find it if they're looking for more information? Yeah, great. So Facebook page, you go to First In and look at us, look at it up, or you can go to First In dot uh, dot FD. Uh, I'm sorry, First In dot net is where uh, yeah. you can go look at it, and uh, you can have the registration form and and t- shows you everybody coming and what's going on. So uh, we have room for 250 people. Uh, if there if we have if we need more room, I'll find it. Um, we got about 150 people showed up right now, scheduled to come. So we got a month out, Jeremy. So maybe we can get. Yeah. Maybe we can. We're we can, gonna push, man. Let's man, go. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm hoping for it. So. Yeah, good. Well, I'm excited, and yep. I'm excited to be a part of it this year. Yes, sir. Um, and uh, I'm looking forward to it, man. And, and we get to sit down and break bread again together. Oh, absolutely. So looking it's forward to that as well. Yes, sir. So Ryan, thanks for joining me on the podcast today, brother. I yeah. truly appreciate you. Appreciate you. Thank you. It's a privilege. Awesome. Stay right here. I'm going to sign off the podcast. I'll come right back to you, okay? Yes, sir. Cool. Guys, thanks for tuning in for another episode of the National Fire Radio Podcast. Like I say at the end of every single episode, take this conversation, take it back to the firehouse and talk about it because when we're talking about the job, we're making the job better. September 11th through the 14th, Little Rock, Arkansas. If you're not there, you're losing. 340 bucks plus $99 a night. Share the room with seven of your buddies. Make the trip out. Come to Little Rock, see some of the biggest names in the fire service and me because I don't belong there, but I'm going to be there. And so I'm excited to uh, I'm excited to be a part of it. So the First In Fire Conference, firstin.net online. Check them out on Facebook. I'd love to see you there. Leave your comments in the comments section below. And, guys, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you at the next one. Jeremy, National Fire Radio. National Fire Radio.